joy to just be here and listen to you all greet each other in the morning. Um, it's really a wonderful thing to do. I want to welcome everybody to worship today. Uh, today is a beautiful day, and we are so glad that you have chosen to Zoom to worship with us. This morning is a special Sunday. We are joining all the ONA churches, all the open and affirming churches of the United Church of Christ. As we are all delighted to say, whoever you are, wherever you are Zooming from, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Today, for the first time, DCC is joining the celebration as a proud open and affirming church one of more than 1,500 in our denomination. And we do so with a spirit of great joy. Everybody say, woohoo! Woohoo! Good job, thank you. Um, this morning, uh, you may notice, or hopefully you won't notice very much, that um, Tim is not with us. You'll certainly notice his absence, his physical and vocal absence, um, hopefully you won't notice the fact that Suzanne and uh, um, Andy and I are scrambling a little bit because, of course, even though Suzanne ran everything thrice this week, uh, things aren't working quite as they normally do here in the sanctuary. So you'll see me looking down at my computer right here. Um, instead of back because the TV screen and my computer didn't sync. So um, don't be surprised if it feels a little different, but hopefully it won't feel very much different to you. Tim is on vacation for not just one, not just two, but three, three weeks. Um, so we'll figure, hopefully we'll figure this out. Next week is the 4th of July weekend, and I'm actually on vacation as well. Bob Spindell is your trusty worship leader, and I know you look forward to the Sundays when Bob is leading. And um, Suzanne will be here along with Andy to provide music and tech, and we, uh, we trust that all things will go well. I'm actually not going on vacation. I'm going on study leave for uh, just a week. I'll be gone from Wednesday to Tuesday, through Tuesday of this coming week. It's actually uh, my anniversary. So I often take the 4th of July weekend off for my anniversary weekend, and I'm looking forward to that. We're only at 33, so not nearly as far along as some of the rest of you but 33 is pretty good, right? Yep. <laughs> um, let's see. I have a couple of other announcements to share with you this morning. Representative Council is today at 1030. The Zoom address was sent to all the Rep Council members by email, and we hope that those folks will join us at 1030 via Zoom. We're looking forward to that meeting. The mission meeting is, the mission team, the mission ministry, is also having a meeting on Zoom on Wednesday at 645, and the contact information about that can be had from Charlotte Buffington. Finally, I got an email from Jackie Nyberg this week that highlighted the final mask count now that the mask project has at least for now um, shut down or calmed down or um, gone into dormancy or something. And uh, you won't believe the mask count that Jackie sent me. Do you know that you all made 3,000 masks total? 3,000. I see a lot of you clapping on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. 3,000. I think that's amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to all of you who sewed and helped um, with, in all the ways with that project. 
those are the announcements that I have this morning. I'm going to look to my screen and see if anybody's jumping up and down or sending a chat that I've missed any announcements. No chat. No annou other announcements. Nobody jumping up and down. OK. Great. Well, this is the time when we come together to be together in the spirit of worship. I invite you to find a candle if you have one prepared and to come and join us as we light the light of Christ as we enter into the spirit of worship. As part of our Open and Affirming Celebration Sunday, uh, two of the members of our Open and Affirming Task Team that helped us get through that process are leading the call to worship this morning. So I invite Evelyn and Steve um, to, join, to lead us in the call to worship. We come today representing all the majesty of creation. Diverse and beautiful, blessed and beloved, all made in the image of the one who created all things. We gather today, called to this time by an infinite God. Hears our cries and responds with love and mercy. We gather today, a diversity of people gay and straight, transgender, queer, lesbian, bisexual, ally, friend and family, all seeking to be ever more open, inclusive and loving. We gather, we gather today, today knowing, knowing God, God will, will listen, listen, and listen and be present. Be present. We worship today, delivering our joined prayers of hope. We worship, we worship today, today a people mourning our losses, seeing, seeing recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic and, from and from the endemic, from the endemic of institutionalized of racism, racism, racism that has plagued our world, our world for too, for too, too many, many centuries. generations. It is my joy this we gather morning today, to oh, God, oh God, knowing, knowing you care, care for, us. for us. We gather, we gather today, today knowing, knowing that, that no matter, matter what, what others, others say, say, your arms are open to offer welcome, welcome and comfort, and comfort, comfort for all. all. Thank you. It is my joy today to teach you a new little song. It's a little song. It's fairly simple. It was written by a friend and colleague of mine by the name of Phil Porter in 1990. In 1990, I was serving on the Open and Affirming National Task Force um, as a member of their fundraising committee. And Phil was the chair of that committee and he's a great artist and poet and church leader and crazy person who lives in the San Francisco <laughs> Bay Area. And he wrote this song to gather us together for worship. And Andy, will you give me the starting note? It's right in the wrong range for me. So um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna sing the first phrase and then I'm gonna invite you to sing the first phrase. So it goes like this. 
Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour. <clears throat> then the second one. Ga gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in one strong body. The next one is like the first one. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. And the end is easy. Spirit draw near. Spirit draw near. So when you put it together, here we go, we'll sing it twice through. You ready? Here we go. Gathered here in the mystery of this sound. Gathered here in one strong body. Gathered here in the struggle and the power. Spirit drawn struggle and the power spirit drawn in. Will you join me in prayer? God of power and love, as we draw near to you in this time of worship, touch us with your spirit that we may know your presence and your blessing. Open our mouths that we might praise you fully and open our hearts to new understandings of how we are to live with others. Offer us guidance as we listen to your scripture and as we lift our prayers to you. And oh God, fill us with the love that you shared in Jesus in whose name we pray and pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, our scripture reader is um, Mr. Jason Schrock. And I saw him. There he is, waving on the screen. Jason, if you talk, Hello. it'll come to you. There. Yes, good morning, everyone. Are you able to hear me clearly? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good deal. And you can see Eleanor here joining us. Um, our reading this morning is from the first letter of John. Uh, as some of us may know, the Jason, you froze. the background briefly. Um, in the New Testament, there are many letters uh, written to the... All right. I'm going to go ahead and let someone else take it over then. Okay. Um, you, you were in and out. So um, uh, uh, Suzanne is saying you're good and I'm struggling to find the scripture, a piece of paper with the scripture reading on it. Let's try again, Jason. Why don't you try, try one more time? If you're still there, he may be gone. Okay. I think that his computer dumped him out. So, this is the reading from the first letter of John, 
reading from the third chapter. The letter says, my dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. We know when it comes to light, we will be like God, for we will see God as God really is. My children, our love must not be simply words or mere talk. It must be true love, which shows itself in action and truth. This then is how we will know we belong to the truth. This is how we'll be confident in God's presence, even if our consciences d condemn us. We know that God is greater than our consciousness and that God knows everything. And if our consciences do not condemn us, my friends, then we have confidence before God and we will receive whatever is asked from God's hand because we keep the commandments and do what is pleasing in God's sight. And the commandments are these, that we believe in the name of God's own Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as we were told to do. Those who keep these commandments live in God and God lives in them. And we know that God lives in us by the spirit which we have been given. <laughs> Here ends our reading from scripture for this morning. May God add a blessing to our hearing and our understanding of it. And now our friend Jennifer. Good morning. Hi. All right. So this morning, um, I wanted to follow up a little on my conversation I had with you last week. I don't know if you all remember. I'm going to switch to a different view here so I can see more faces than my own. Um, so last week we talked about, um, I think it was last week, about Abraham and um, about the many nations and about the family trees. Was that last week? Yes. We remember that talk? Okay. Um, so this morning, I wanted to talk to you about family a little bit more also, because um, while it's open and affirming Sunday, we remember that we're all part of God's family. And um, so I wondered uh, what you thought, and you guys can raise your hands. I'm going to try and scroll through. I haven't asked any questions in a few weeks, so I thought maybe you'd want to participate or type in the chat if you want to. Um, what are some good things about family? Some things that you like about family? I'll give you a second to answer. Charlotte's running away. She doesn't even want to answer the question. She ran away. <laughs> um, I don't see hands up. So if you're, if you're, gonna, oh, Carol Tordoff, what, what, your hand is up. They America, all love, they, America's they love up you. Too. They love you. Yes, family loves you. Oh, Merrick's hand is up too. I see that now. Merrick, what's something good about family? Well, you're, ne you're never alone, so you're never feeling, you, can, you don't have to go through things alone, so they're always next to you. Family is really, really often very supportive, and so it's good to have someone to go through things with you, and um, Families are different sizes. Some of you have a lot of siblings or a lot of cousins. Some of you are an only child. Some of you have one parent in your home. Some of you have two. Um, some of the adults here live by themselves or maybe with just one partner. But even while um, families are all different sizes, um, that support uh, that you get from having someone else to go through things is important. And it might not happen in your household. So if you think about um, 
Let's see, we have love and always there, no matter what, usually. <laughs> yeah, so um, and my sister, it was funny, I wanted to talk about family today, and my sister happened to send me a little picture um, this morning that said, uh, dear sister, I'm not perfect. I may annoy you, make fun of you, say stupid things, but you'll never find someone who loves you as much as I do. So I thought that was kind of funny, because sometimes... Uh, siblings can be a little like that, you know. Um, they've known you since you were young. Yeah, and church is a family, a big family. So that was where I was going to go next is even though the family in your household might be different from somebody else's household, you might have one person, you might be the only one in your home, you might, there might be, I don't know, nine of you in your home. Um, the church, the family is much bigger than that. So um, they've known you since you were young. I don't know if I read that out loud. Um, yeah. So church is your family too, right? So even if you're feeling like um, maybe you don't have siblings or you don't have cousins or you don't have um, somebody to keep you company in the evening, your church is your family. And it goes even broader than that because our church community is our family, right? But then there's other churches that are all part of a family. So uh, I've been on a committee the past few years for Prepared to Serve, which is a kind of workshop day. And I've met people from a bunch of other churches. And so they're my family too. And um, people you know and like and love are in your family. People you maybe don't care for very much are in your family. Uh, people you don't even know, total strangers. And that's because we're all part of one big family. And whose family is that? Whose family are we part of? God's. God's. Absolutely. Every person is part of God's family, is one of God's children. And so it's important to remember when we celebrate family that even though families look really different and everybody's family tree looks really different, um, that we're all part of God's family. And so um, we can always have someone to turn to, especially through our connections and relationships at church. And so all, all of us who are different than one another, um, that's great. Who wants to be all the same anyway, you know? So um, it's always a good opportunity to celebrate being different. People that love you, people that make you a little crazy. That's okay. God loves them too. And Merrick and Pender just looked at each other. Are you, are you thinking that you make each other a little bit crazy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> that happens. Look at my sister and I are grown adults. And she sent me that thing today that said, even though I might annoy you, I love you a lot. <laughs> so, you know, that happens. So, all right, let's be in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for bringing us together, for connecting us, for helping us to know each other, for watching each other grow up and do that growing together. And we pray for every one of your family members. And we pray that if we see someone who is different than us, who we maybe don't connect with, who is a stranger, help us to have the perspective that that person is one of your children also. Amen. Now to join me in singing, we need a faith. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. You won't know the difference if it appears on your screen, but if you have the music in front of you, we're singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's join together. We're going to play it once through. Oh, that's right. I could have sworn we'd sing, sung this one before, but I'm getting no's from all around. So Andy's going to play it through for us once. That does not judge 
week, we began in the new book group that's studying the book Just Mercy to look at the book and to talk about it. And one of the things that this book um, talks about in the very beginning um, is the idea that we can come to understand other people and differences by drawing close to other people and differences. We can come to understand issues better by drawing closer to those issues. The idea of drawing closer and coming together with something that we don't know or don't understand in order to understand it more is very, very important. And that inspired me because over the years, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I didn't understand about this or that until I experienced it for myself. I've also had a lot of people say to me, well, I didn't understand about gays and lesbians and stuff until I finally met somebody who was gay or lesbian or stuff. And I've heard that a lot over the many, many years of my life. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I didn't didn't know that you were lesbian. And um, it's such an interesting thing to have people say that to you and to talk about the fact that they didn't understand about a difference, a difference that you are, Um, until they got to know you or someone else in the same way. The truth is, my mother had uh, a great time saying that to me. I didn't understand, she would say. I just didn't understand, Lisa, about being lesbian. Only she couldn't say the word lesbian. So she said, lesbian, that was my mother, She could never quite pronounce that word. I don't know if it was a word thing or a mental block, but she said lesbian um, instead of lesbian. And it was always so funny. But she said, I didn't understand until you came out to me and I started looking at you and understanding your life from your perspective. It was a wonderful thing when that happened. And it happened, a little personal story here, it happened because Joe and I decided that we wanted to get married. Uh, It was a long, long time ago and legal marriage was not an option for us at that time. Um, But we decided we wanted to have what we called in those days a ceremony of covenant. And so we began to plan for that. And I told one of my sisters that Joe and I were going to do this. I told her in the early spring that we were going to do it on the 4th of July weekend that summer. And my sister said to me, well, that's nice, Lisa. Are you going to invite the family 
And I stuttered, and I said, well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I was planning on it, um, or at least inviting you and my other sister. And she said, I won't come unless you tell mom and dad and invite them too. <sighs> Sisters, as Jennifer said, can be such a challenge and so blessing. I wasn't out to my parents at the time, and so my sister challenged me to do that. And I did. And I'm forever grateful to that sister for kind of encouraging me in that direction. Because while my parents had a variety of reactions initially, it was not very long before they were completely 100% supportive and loving and encouraging of Joe and me. And they came on the 4th of July that year in 1987 to our service of commitment. And they blessed it with their presence and with their joy. So 1987 was quite some time ago. And um, this year, the month of June, as it is every year, is known as Pride Month for the LBGTQA plus community. And over the years, there has always been a pride parade and a pride celebration of some kind. Many of you have heard about them or seen them on the news. I suspect or hope that some of you have even walked in a pride parade or two. The truth is, I have a secret, a secret and shameful thing is that I have never marched in a pride parade. Everybody do this so I can see you. Thank you. I go to lots of protests and demonstrations and gatherings, but I've never been to a pride parade. And I was looking forward to the fact that this year would be the year that I broke this streak because you all became open and affirming this year. And as the pastor of a newly minted open and affirming church, I assumed that I would be marching with a contingent from DCC at Concord's Pride Day on the first Saturday in June, or Manchester's Pride Day on the third Saturday in June, or some one of more than one of those. I didn't think I'd ever have to make this confession ever again that I had not marched in a pride parade because I don't like to admit it. I don't want people to think that I'm not proud of who I am. I just really don't like marching in long lines, in long parades, and so I haven't done it. But I don't want think people to think I'm ashamed either, because I'm not. I think it's a funny balance to find humility finding ourselves and our balance and being able to like and even love ourselves without being puffed up and obnoxiously full of ourselves, and at the same time not being self-denigrating. It's a tough balance, isn't it? Self-confidence, they sometimes call it. Humility is how I think about it. I think this balance is important enough that Jesus saw fit to include it in the great commandments. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. And it comes again in our reading this morning from 1 John, in the declaration that we are all God's children, that we should be confident in God's presence and God's blessing. And finally, that we should know God lives in us by the spirit 
given to us. I hear those words echoed over and over again in my head because in 1987, this was the scripture reading that we used for our covenant service. And the preacher that day, a dear friend and pastor uh, here in Massachusetts at the time, no, they're in Massachusetts at the time, I'm in New Hampshire today, um, said over and over again in her meditation, and we know God's blessing by the spirit we have been given. It's an amazing thing to contemplate just that phrase. We know God loves us by the spirit we have been given. We know God's presence by the spirit we have been given. We know we are God's children by the spirit we have been given. Now, you all, as part of DCC, know about spirit, because the spirit sure does live here. Even in this setting, when we're trying to connect over Zoom, the spirit thrives at DCC. And if you weren't sure, look what happened before worship started or as worship was starting. Hi, so-and-so, hi, so-and-so, hi, so-and-so, hi, 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 hi. It's an amazing, lovely thing. We know that God is with us because of the spirit with which God has blessed us. Now, it's not easy to know that and be proud of it. And to know that you can feel proud because God's spirit lives within us and because we are God's children. But that's what the scripture reminds us of over and over again and in this reading. We are God's blessed and beloved children. How often do we lose track of that? How often day to day do we think, oh, this is going wrong, I've done this wrong, I'm not sure I sh I'm doing what I should be doing, I should have made phone calls, I should have sent thank you notes, I shoulda, 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 right? You all shoulda, don't you? Everybody nod up and down for me. We should have on ourselves a lot. So finding that way to be proud and humble, to live with the knowledge that we are God's beloved children is a bit of a challenge from time to time. And when you are um, a person who is different, whom the world says is not okay, that knowledge is especially hard to hold on to. And in 1986, before Joe and I had our covenant service, and in the first year and a half that I was out, I have to admit that I struggled. I struggled with this sense of being proud of who I was and of being God's beloved child. Because a lot of people thought that that wasn't true. And we lived in a situation where we tried to hide that reality from the world. And part of it we did in order to be safe. And part of it we did because we didn't know how to do otherwise. We did not know how to be and live proudly about who we were and who we loved. And we had a dear friend who Joe and I had met in the first days of our being together, who was the beloved uh, babysitter of our goddaughters. Our goddaughters, actually only one goddaughter had been born at this point, and she was the beloved babysitter of this precious baby who we loved so much. And we interacted because 
she would babysit, and then Joe and I would go over, and we would take over while Emily, the mom, was, um, was working. Emily, the mom, by the way, is the one you, some of you know, Emily Gohegan. This was her first child and my first goddaughter. And her babysitter, Margaret, was an amazing woman. She was a woman who was strong and full of life. She had served in the military. She had gotten married and raised kids. She had raised foster children. She was a pillar of her church and well known in her community as a person to be loved and admired. And Margaret decided to befriend Joe and I. And she would talk to us when we switched over from babysitting duties. And she would talk to us at other times. And we had fun together, and we enjoyed one another. And then she was diagnosed with cancer. And she encountered cancer in a magnificent way. She fought, and she battled. And then she realized that she was not going to prevail. And so she went about saying goodbye with the most enormous grace and love of anybody I've ever known. And at one point during that process, Joe and I were hailed by Margaret. She said, I'd like you to come over and see me. So we took big, deep, deep breaths, and we went over to see her. We knew that it was toward the end of her time. So she was lying in her bed, and Joe and I went and visited. And this wise and kind and feisty and deeply faithful woman laughed with us and told us stories and shared with us, and then she said, okay, come closer. And so we came closer, and she took my hand, and she took Joe's hand, and she put our two hands together and held them together with her hands. And she looked at each of us very deliberately and said, you are God's beloved children. Be proud of who you are. You are God's beloved children. Be proud of who you are. It was an incredible blessing to receive from a person of such power and wisdom and love. Following that affirmation of God's love for us, we were dismissed from that place and we went out, as you might expect, weeping. And we got in the car and we pulled away from the house and we knew that neither one of us would drive very far because the tears were falling so hard. So I pulled over and Margaret lived near the entrance to a park. I pulled over at the entrance to the park and we got out of the car and kind of sat on the bumper and cried, and held hands, and cried. And in the midst of that, we were suddenly surrounded by dragonflies, as if we had driven into a cloud of them and they had cleared only to come back and land on both of us and buzz around our heads like an additional blessing from God. Margaret has been a, butterf a, a dragonfly ever since. And when I see them, I am always reminded. I know that's true for a lot of you as well. Dragonflies are kind of a sacred message, reminding us of the beauty and the fragility and the strength of God's love. You are God's beloved children. 
Be proud of who you are. That's an amazing message to hear as a person who's not sure of it. I pray that we may all know that is true for us, that it is true for each one of you, each of you sitting there in your homes, and so many other people who do not know or have not heard that God loves them, and that we can all be proud of who we are. That's my pride message on this day as we celebrate being an open and affirming church of the United Church of Christ. And that's what I think we celebrate today as the members of Deerfield Community Church. I want to invite you as you sit with that notion of being proud of yourself and also being proud of your church, to turn to your bulletins if you printed them, or Suzanne will bring up on the screen, the words of our affirmation of covenant, of being open and affirming at the Deerfield Community Church. And I'm gonna invite you to unmute and let's read those words and affirm this statement together. We, we, the members, members of the Deerfield Church, of the Church of Christ, believe that all people created in God's image, therefore, therefore, love, value, and blessed by God. Welcome, welcome all, all who seek to seek follow all or understand Jesus Christ. Christ. This community of faith is an open congregation which welcomes other persons from all races, all races, all ethnic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, dual oriented, identities, physical and mental abilities, place structures, marital status, and socioeconomic background. All persons invited to be invited to Participation, Ways, ways to live our own support, support our support, support and and respect for all God's beloved children as God's beloved children. Thank you, dear friends. And now I invite you to enjoy this piece of music, which um, I, I, we're hoping will come up on the screen. It's a video of a wonderful group singing a wonderful contemporary song called Child of God. And there it is. We're not hearing it though. Can't hear it. No, can't hear anything. Hang on, they'll get louder in a second. Nope. 
I know, I just didn't know if I... Oh, Mark Miller is a really good... Uh... I do what Pete World says. Says or thinks about you. You are a child. You are a child of God. It's not coming true, Lisa. She knows it. Nothing. Thing. All right. I'm seeing that people can't hear this at all. Right. Okay. Right. So, Suzanne, I'm going to invite you to stop the video. So, uh, I'm sorry that you couldn't hear it because it's a really, truly wonderful song. Um, and I'm just going to sing you a snippet because um, it's worth hearing. It goes like this. No matter what people say, say or think about me, I am a child, I am a child of God. No matter what people say, say or think about you, you are a child, you are a child of God. That's how part of it goes. And um, that's the message that I wanted it to send. So. We'll, um, we'll put the link in the chat, and, um, and you all can take a look at it at your leisure on YouTube. So, as we consider ourselves as children of God, as we consider each other as children of God, I want to invite you to come to a time of prayer. I want you to dive deep into the spirit of God which we have been given, which is present with us, that reminds us that we live in God and God lives in us. Let us come now to a time of silent prayer and meditation. Gracious God, you love all that you have created and you celebrate the diversity of your creation. Throughout your history with your people, you have reminded us that all are loved and that those whom the world sees as the least are the greatest in your eyes. We ask this day, O oh God, that you would give us the grace to celebrate one another as your beloved. We ask that you would give us the humility and the pride to know that we, each of us, are ourselves beloved by you. We pray that you might help us celebrate this great truth together. 
We ask that you would help us to celebrate the lesbian, bisexual, transgender sisters and brothers as they choose to live authentically in our world. Teach us to honor and celebrate their gifts and help us to create a world in which all are accepted, affirmed as your children and loved. We pray, O oh God, that you might touch the lives of all your children, all your people throughout this world, that those who are struggling in every place might know your presence and might share in your strength. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in need from land to land. We pray for those who are ill, and we pray for caregivers. We pray for those who are living in poverty, and we pray for those who are living with other problems in their lives. Help us to be your servants, to act in deed and not just in word. Bring us together, O oh God, as we lift up the names and concerns of our hearts and prayers to you in this time of prayer. O oh God, hear our prayers. Steve. Joe. Donna, Kimmy, Uncle Ronnie, John. Ella Smart's family, Clark Max has been hospitalized, Sandy and Jacob, my sister Karen, Mom and Maxine, Arlene, my sister Patsy. My cousin Tammy. Thanksgiving for Joe and Lisa. Thanksgiving for all those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, graduations, and other special occasions. Thanksgiving for Noreen being home. Mm -hmm. All these prayers, O oh God, we offer to you knowing that you are present, that you hear us, that you send your strength and your help to those in need, and that you bless us with your love each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Friends, uh, we have one last hymn to sing together. And I honestly, at this point, have no idea if this is a new one or an old one. <laughs> oh, dear God. Suzanne says it's new. But I know the tune isn't new. So well, hopefully... <laughs> We'll, we'll be able to, to do this. Um, I, th I think it's a great hymn. So let's uh, join together. Andy will play it through for us once. Yeah. 
with us and weave us into one. Though we have frayed the fabric of your mystery, Yet to be whole, humanity is aching. Come work with us and weave us into one. Great loom of God, where history is woven, you are the frame. Us to the truth. Christ is the theme, the pattern you have given. Come work with us and weave us in to one. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this church, and we give you thanks for the blessings we know herein. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless us as we go forth into our world. Help to make us proud of who we are and whose we are, for we are your beloved children. Send us forth to proclaim that good news and give us your peace, your hope, and your joy, day by day by day. Amen. Can you hear the bell, everybody? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. All the way to Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it in Leesburg, Florida. Good, Jenny. <laughs> Good job, Bo. <laughs> Let's see how many families again. Last forty-three. Steve and Diane and Jackie and Cindy and Bob and Sam and Paula and Pam and Sue and Robbie and Evelyn and Evelyn, you're next to each other. And <laughs> Ann and Steve and Wendy and Lynn and Ann and Jim and Deb and Charlotte and Bonnie and Marie and Wad. And let's see, Meredith and Kendra and Emily back behind them. And let's see. Erica and Charlotte and Jenny in Florida and Don and Carol and Phyllis and Jackie and Marcus and Jackie's sister whose name I lost. And um, let's see who else here. Uh, second page, Brad and Amy who went blank and Bill Carboneau <laughs> and Nancy and Herb and Jennifer and Ruth and Christi uh, Christina. Yeah. Oh, also known as Chris and Victoria, who was there, and Noreen and Linda Fusco and iPad and Shauna and Patrick and Sarah Lyon and um, all the people with Sarah Lyon and Jackie Deering and Pam Hayes and our phone number person whose name has gone from my head and blessings and peace. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, Bye everyone. Peace. Have a great day.